What Unsolved Mystery Gives You the Creeps? Part 4. If you like the kind of content we create, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel thread tonic. Account 1. A few years ago, was woken up from a deep sleep in the middle of the night by this bizarre music. It sounded like a clown singing, Happy, happy, everybody's happy. I thought it was just a dream until I looked over at my wife, wide-eyed and awake. Did you hear that? She asked. I grabbed a baseball bat and searched all over the house. Our TV was off, computer unplugged, and phones on silent. We never discovered where the music came from. Account 2. Here's one. And it's a personal one, too. There are strange noises in the sky. They happen all across the world. At first, I was a little weirded out because when I ran downstairs and outside, they always stopped and nobody else nearby heard them. To me, they sound a bit like a massive sky whale or something. They sound like whale sounds. Some people call it a loud groaning or scraping. Governments have tried to explain them in a variety of ways, but those have all been proved to be lies. It wasn't an assumption, it was a statement. In fact, while scientists have been able to disprove what governments have claimed, they haven't been able to find out what's causing them. There's videos all across the internet with recordings of it. It's not construction, because people have heard it out in the middle of nowhere. Ice shelves scraping together wouldn't make sense because they've heard it on the equator. Earthquake-like stuff is also a no, because I live in an area where earthquakes are impossible and I've heard it. Maybe there is a giant sky whale. Who knows? Account 3. The incident that happened around 36 years ago where some guy dressed as Max Headroom hacked into a broadcast of Doctor Who, and to this day, they still don't know who it is. Account 4. I'm interested in every disappearance of a child. So, of course, Madeline McCann is one of my favorite unsolved cases. I also have a similar story in my hometown, 10K Residence, Eastern Europe. In 1994, 14-year-old girl left her house at around 2 p.m., went to see her boyfriend in the hospital, and she reached this destination. No one knows what happened. No one wants to talk about it after 20 years. The guy who was her boyfriend at that time is now an editor of a local newspaper. He doesn't want to talk about it either. This city is like Dodgeville. Everyone is silent. It also have a story of killing Jews in Second World War. Account 5. This one is more just sad than mysterious. Disappearance of Amy Lynn Bradley. Amy Lynn Bradley disappears while her cruise ship is docked in Curacao. Over the next several years, people report seeing a woman matching her description in brothels around the area, sometimes asking for help before being escorted away. It's very likely she was sold into sex slavery. The last semi-reliable sighting was in 2005. She's very likely dead at this point, but I can't imagine the pain of not knowing. Her parents are still alive and still wondering. They've offered tens of thousands for information that might lead to some closure. What a horrific situation. Account 6. My friend had his little brother Garrett go missing in the high Uintas. He was out there with his dad and other scouts and got his socks wet. He was told by his dad to go get fresh socks on at the camp, which was about 150 yards away from where they were fishing. He went and never came back. I remember we had tons of searches for him and never found much of anything. The only thing that ever turned up was one of his socks a few months later. Account 7. Kaneka Jenkins. I've been following the case since it happened in September. Girl was found dead half-naked in a freezer in the unused kitchen of a hotel in Chicago the day after she goes missing from a kickback in one of the rooms. Live videos from the party strongly hint that her friends sold her or something along those lines and the hotel, where one of her friends worked, is most likely covering something up. She was missing over 24 hours when they found her. Her friends had her keys and phone. No security footage that show her actually walking into the freezer. Hotel says that particular camera was not working at the time, but there's hours of security footage of her stumbling around the hotel, lobby, and operational kitchen very obviously out of it with different timestamps that just don't add up. Her death was ruled accidental and the case closed, but there's a lot of people on Facebook that are absolutely doing the most trying to solve the case because it's incredibly obvious that her death was not accidental.
Autopsy showed that she had some sort of anti-seizure meds in her system she wasn't prescribed along with alcohol. Actual cause of death, I believe, was hypothermia. This case has been bothering me for a while. I hope it gets solved someday. I keep waiting for one of her friends to come forward and tell the truth. Account 8. The disappearance of 14-year-old Loreen Ron is creepy AF. It starts when Loreen's mother, Judith, returns home from an event and discovers Loreen is gone, and the details get stranger and stranger. When Judith arrives home, her apartment building is in total darkness because the light bulbs on all three floors have been unscrewed. Later that year, 1980, Judith discovers three unexplained calls on her phone bill made from California. One of the calls is for a teen sexual assistance hotline run by a California physician. The physician first denies all knowledge of Loreen. Later, he changes his story and admits that his wife is sometimes visited by teen runaways and that this might have included Loreen. He also suggests that a colleague of his wife's, porn star Annie Sprinkle, might know Loreen. Police briefly investigate Sprinkle, but can't find a connection. The other two calls went to a Santa Monica hotel allegedly used by a child pornographer named Dr. Z. Judith receives weird calls in the middle of the night, with silence on the other end, for years until she changes her number and moves. All of this info comes from Charlie Project and sounds like a textbook case of trafficking. Account 9. Several women have gone missing in the Albany, NY area where I live. The remains of a few of them have been found, but not the person who took them. Karen Wilson, for example, has been missing since 1985. No trace of her has been found. It's suspected that there's a serial killer operating around here, and no one has a clue who it is. The police presence in some spots is so thin, they may never get the guy. Account 10. In my hometown, there was a murder mystery at Cal Poly. Kristen Smart went missing one night in 1996, and her body was never found. It's assumed she was murdered. Local police completely fucked up the case. The main suspect had multiple bruises on his face and hands, and was the last person to have seen her, but without a body, they couldn't do anything. The school mistakenly cleaned out his and her dorm before police investigated it, leaving no evidence. The suspect's family, which lived nearby, oddly paved their backyard late one night around the same time. It's thought that her body might be under the concrete slab, but police refuse to look into it. Years later, a private investigator sneaks behind the suspect's family yard with a cadaver dog. The dog freaks out. He alerts police, but they do nothing. The suspect also has a long history or odd behavior. So much so, he loses his job at Pepsi because people felt unsafe around him. He was also stopped by police a year before Kristen went missing for trying to peak break into a girl's dorm room. He was let go because it was assumed he was simply intoxicated. Account 11. Patricia Meehan. She literally had a car accident and just walked away and was never seen again. It's one of those cases where there isn't much information about it, which is annoying, but also makes it incredibly creepy. Angela Hammond is another one. She was at a payphone talking to her boyfriend. A man shoved her into his truck, and her boyfriend rushed over to the payphone she was at and chased them. His truck died in the middle of the chase. What's sad is her family still talks about her on Facebook. The boyfriend has since moved on and has a big family now, but it's all just so sad. He still comments on her missing page. She was pregnant by him at the time. They had their life planned out. I can't imagine that. Maura Murray is another one that bothers me. Alyssa Lam, of course. Account 12. The mystery of the sonic weapon in Cuba, the blaring, grinding noise jolted the American diplomat from his bed in a Havana hotel. He moved just a few feet, and there was silence. He climbed back into bed. Inexplicably, the agonizing sound hit him again. It was as if he'd walked through some invisible wall cutting straight through his room. Soon came the hearing loss and the speech problems. Symptoms both similar and altogether different from others, among at least 21 U.S. victims in an astonishing international mystery still unfolding in Cuba. The top U.S. diplomat has called them health attacks. Basically, 
Some sort of sonic weapon was used either to attack or spy on American and later Canadian diplomats in Cuba. No party was officially identified as the culprit yet. Count 13. A old neighbor of mine died a few years ago. Me couldn't find a cause of death, so they ruled it as natural causes. But his house was entirely cleaned out. This guy was a drunk and a meth head, and they found none of this. All they found was a packed suitcase. Account 14. I don't know that it creeps me out so much as it is the one I just can't let go of, and it's the mystery that that just sticks with me. But it's mystery of the Roanoke Colony. How do 115 people just disappear and leave behind a whole settlement save a single skeleton and the world Croatone carved into a tree and then never get found? Account 15. The murder of Amber Takaro. She was killed in Canada after trying to hitchhike her into town, presumably by the man who picked her up. You can hear B him speak in the video too. They actually have the last call recorded. Just search on YouTube, Amber Takaro. The whole thing is disturbing, especially when you factor in she knew something wasn't right. It's disturbing. Also, Brain Scratch just had an episode detailing the whole tragedy. I'd recommend watching it if you haven't yet. <laughs>